Well, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We have some more social proof. This is real social proof, okay? Not people who are teaching off a of theory or what they think or what sounds good because a lot of motivational speakers are motivating people to be successful, but they're not even successful by their own standard. But we got Max Maxwell, somebody that's really successful with a cool name. What's going on, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Man, thanks for having me. Brother. Oh, thanks. For... First off, I got to tell y'all, all the other podcasts, okay, I do them at the E-Complex in Atlanta. But uh, Max has his own. It's like, it's kind of like the E-Complex, okay? <laughs> Just times 10, okay? And uh, he probably put a lot more money into his space. But it looks the same on camera. I will give you credit. So I did come to the E-Complex mm -hmm. for the sole purpose to see how you had it built to come back here and build something. So I did it after you. So it's like, if you sent me the, the beat and the verse after, I, I had to kill it. That's real. I ain't mad at that. And I want to jump straight into that because... What, what so impresses me about what you do, and uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, is you find a model and you just make it your own model. Like, you're not a reinvent the wheel type person. No, I'm not. So explain to people what you do, and uh, you know, we'll start right there. Um, I'm, a, I'm a real estate investor. Uh, a category that I thrive in and invest in real estate is wholesaling. Um, so I, I wholesale a lot of properties a month. And for you that don't know what it is, just look that up. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way to become uh, rich in real estate in order to, if you don't have you know, a lot of capital up front. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what it is. And I, I do a lot of videos on how I do it. Right, right. Yeah. You've been wholesaling for what, 10, 12 years now? Nah, about two and some, two years and, and a little bit. Hold on, nah, because you said you ran, a, you did seven figures last year. Yeah. Which means last year, the year before that, a little bit before the year before that, you were doing what? Zero. I was broke in my mom's house. I, lived, I was living, I had to move back home with my mom at like 30, 31. So your life can change in two years? Absolutely. I mean, it took 10 years to get here, but it can change in two years. All right. So how did you start? I want to know like the drama of the story, like when you knew this is going to be it. Um, so, you know, I had an app company. Um, that we went out, we raised some money, not enough. We couldn't finish the build of the product. And uh, I had quit my job that I had working in the marketing world while I was touring and stuff, working for some big companies. Mm -hmm. And then I, I uh, stumbled upon wholesale and real estate and I got totally involved. Nah, fam, not to stumble upon. Yeah. You know how people be like, yo, All uh, right, so I, give you the details. I came over a house, one thing led to the next, we got six kids. It's I got, crazy. Uh, uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I want to know how we got into it. Talk to me. Um, so I had a friend, his dad um, is in real estate, and I went to his house and I overheard them talking about real estate, and his dad had a little, his dad's a teacher, and he, like, not a teacher in the sense he, he just, he loves sharing with people. So he, he mentioned one thing that, you know, wholesaling was something you can do and get into at a low, had a low barrier of entry into real estate. And at that time I was broke, broke, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, broken and there's broke, broke. Mm -hmm. I was broke, broke. And after I heard the word wholesaling, that's all I had to do. And I went home and I literally Googled it, YouTubed it. And three weeks I didn't come out of my room pretty much like on for unnecessary using the bathroom and eating. That was it. And I literally learned wholesaling. Mm -hmm. At least I thought I knew wholesaling. I learned enough to go out there and take action. And in three weeks, I, 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 left, I left the house, got in my 04 Volkswagen Jetta that had a bad starter. I got in that thing and I went driving around what they call drive for dollars. Mm -hmm. And I went into an old neighborhood that I, that I used to live in. And I found a house. And, you know, t t two weeks after that, almost two weeks after that, I made $14,000. And then... Then when I held that $14,000 check in my hand, I was like, okay, I know this is real. So I took about 10 hours worth of work to make 14 grand. And I was like, okay. Then the next week I made seven grand. And then I was like, okay, this is real, real. Right. And uh, <clears throat> you know, here, here we are today. We've done hundreds of deals. And uh, mm. you know, we don't stop. I got a, I got a staff of 10 people and we run it. Unbelievable. Locking in for three weeks, <clears throat> that level of focus. Have you always had that level of focus? I've, I've been known to come <clears throat> obsessed with things. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've probably had nine, ten failed businesses before this. So I lock in. I get obsessed with, obsessed with things that I learn. Mm -hmm. So I would, say, I would say I got obsessed, but I, I, 
I never got obsessed and then the success had come in that fast. Mm. And you know, that made it even, you know what I mean? You got, you, you're obsessed with something and then you get the high. Right. It's like, okay. And then it happened again the following week. And here I went from broke to in like, in four weeks, $21,000 in the bank. And that's a lot of money. Yo, can you teach that obsession? Or is, is that something you're born with? Or is it, is it some, so let me, let me ask you. Say you took a, I don't know, a mentee, and you know one of the keys to success is developing that obsession, right? Mm-hmm. Is that something that you can teach? I don't know. Here, here's my answer. I don't think you can teach obsession or sense of urgency. <clears throat> I think people, some, a lot of people, people just are, some people are naturally lazy and they're okay with mediocre. I've never been that person. So you, you can have all the talent. Matter of fact, I'm not the smartest guy. Like I, I'm dyslexic, so I have a hard time reading, mm. right, long books. Um, I, don't do, I, don't do, I don't do well, I barely pass high school, just stuff like that. So for me, um, I'm, I'm not the smartest, but you know, being, I found something that I want to become, I was obsessed with just entrepreneurship to begin with, period. Mm. And then to find this, I had a passion with real estate already. So to find these two and be able to merge them together, it's just crazy. But to answer your question, I don't think you can teach somebody to have that obsession with things. I mean, you gotta be passionate about something, mm-hmm. but to just become a driven, obsessed person, I don't know if that's teachable. I could teach you business all day long. Right. But to have fire, I don't know if I can teach you fire. Mm. What are some, I, I, there has to be some way, I mean, to, to develop that, because some people say, well, you gotta find your why, but I guess this is what I find. People say, yo, my kids are my why. This is why I gotta grind. But three months later, they don't feel like grinding. I don't know if it's, <laughs> your kids are less important now. I don't know. Probably is, right? yeah. It's so fake grind. But what do you give, what do you tell those people who get these start, stop, start, stop, start, stop? What do you tell those people? It's usually, <clears throat> um, usually whatever the, the situation you're in that made you start, you're really not that uncomfortable. Hmm. Right? It's just, somebody might have lit a fire on you, you might have went to, you might have heard YouTube videos, you might have heard ET speak, and you're like, you all fired up, but it don't last. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, I, that's firewood, I'm cold, right? So I, my thing's burning for a long time. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't, I, if, you're, if you start and stop, I tell people in this business all the time, if you're thinking of giving up 30, 60 days into this, you're better off. You, somebody pitched you a get-rich-quick scheme, mm-hmm. and that's not what this is. And I think a lot of people, when they don't hit that, they do, when they do things for money, mm-hmm. you ain't going to last. I know it sounds cliche, I don't know what, but if you do things for money and try to, you ain't going to last. Wow. One thing I, I know is your brand is, like, electrifying. Like, you have built a personal brand. Well, do you think most, do you think, what percentage of your sex success comes from your knowledge of real estate and what percentage at this level comes from just your brand, the way you've been able to attract people? Um, I would say revenue wise on paper, it's probably 30, 40% of what I generate in a year comes from the brand. Mm. Um, and that could just be anything, right? Um. But I think, you know, I, one thing that I, my brand helps me with is a lot of JV deals. I have people that... JV? Joint ventures. When, when I do a 50-50 partnership with somebody on a property that they're not sure if they can get rid of, yeah. or somebody calls me for advice and my team takes over and we handle it, we do a lot of that too because we teach them along the way. Um, so, you, you know, I follow a guy named Gary V. You know, he talks about how important brand is, and he's right. In one year, I've been able to change a lot. Right. You know, I sell through brand. I don't I don't have to sell. I don't have to get on here and tell you bye, 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 bye. Like it's it's a branding and it's a long term play. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, is that a lot of people, they and they might even look at you like, yo, you only been doing real estate two years. I've been doing real estate for 20. He doesn't know half the stuff I know, but you're more successful. Absolutely. It's you know, the highest paid basketball player, the highest paid football player is not necessarily the best. Carmelo mm-hmm. Anthony just made X amount of dollars and paid, what, a couple games? So his game to check ratio was unbelievable. Wow. That don't mean he's the best player, right? I just, I mean, Michael Jordan is the highest played basketball player, not right. even of his time. Right. So that argument is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
So how, like, what is it that you're doing that all these other people in the real estate space aren't? Because respectfully, you're like, especially the only African American that I've seen with a brand like that in real estate. I have a long-term goal, and it doesn't include selling you something right now. Explain that. Break that down. From so I mean, home. so with with so in the wholesaling real estate space, I have the largest audience. I know that, and I know it won't last forever. But at the same time, I'm not asking you to buy something from me. Now, yeah, of course, I'll do a conference once a year, but I'm not asking you to purchase a course. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You have different strategies on how to market yourself or your business. I'm probably leaving anywhere from three to five million dollars a year on the table by not having a course, mm. right? Real numbers. And that's fine because the long-term play I have is, you know, I want 150,000 a speech, mm. right? So that's like, that's down the rest, four years down the road. That's after you build this mega brand. So I'm leaving five, three, five million dollars on the table now by not selling you something but in the, in the return when I'm older and when I can continue to speak forever, or I, can, I can walk into a business and get paid, you know, two quarter million dollars for a consultant fee or whatever that brand takes me. Like, like, like Gary Vee says, I think personal brand is going to be the next billion dollar it. Like, mm. like you, listen, celebrities and sports players, they're all fading. I mean, think about it. Think about how relevant the best athlete in football is right now. Who is the best athlete in football? I mean, Tom Brady, I suppose. But you don't yeah. think about him during. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, so, again. so think about think about the lines that celebrities used to like. Celebrities showing up at this store. Think about the lines that used to bring. Mm -hmm. Don't bring that no more. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, yo, Jake Paul's at this coliseum and it's a line around the corner. Dude built a personal brand, makes a million dollars a month from YouTube. Mm. Like, like you can have a brand and make money and not sell to your consumers. My thing is, how is it, how would selling to your people right now, your audience right now, prevent you from building that? Like, what's the philosophy behind it? I don't, I don't think, it, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's wrong. I think that's my, my approach to the business is that I didn't want to sell now to the audience and I just and listen it's my own thought and it might not even be right mm -hmm. but I'm willing to take that risk I see people before me that sell 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 and they're no longer here right so I'm like so you know people think like you're you're con everybody is a consumer so you look and you're like Yo, who's the next guru mm -hmm. who's oh you're it now because a lot of people message me and a lot of people send me DMs or like yo where can I buy your course I don't have one. Right. It's not that I'm saying anybody that has a course is bad. I'm just saying I don't have one. So I, 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 I hope in the long play that what I'm doing is worth it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. Well, I, I don't know, though. So your thought process is just, yo, know, I don't, it, it's something in me, because I think a lot of, even a lot of the stuff that I do, I'm sure a lot of stuff you do is based on, Maybe something you really can't explain, but I feel like this, it needs to look like this, or I feel like I need to make this move. So you're saying, I just feel like I don't want to sell nothing right now until you feel it, right? Yeah. Which I think we were having a conversation of an outlier, somebody who is on top and they try to put somebody else on to take their place, but it never really happens, mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of it may be that feeling because you can't manufacture that feeling that you get when you see something different, right? I think it's, I, I think a lot of people tell me that being authentic has helped me. Mm. Like some, like I've seen people after me create YouTube channels only to sell their course. People see that. Yeah. Like people, but like consumers can pick that out. Now your course can be bomb mm -hmm. and it actually be worth more than anything I could put out. But the intentions behind what you're doing is so important. Yeah. There's so, it's such a negative conversation right now behind courses. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's been oversaturated with a lot of gimmicks. Right. So I decided to go left when everybody was going right. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I, I do. I got to ask you a very serious question. So to go from broke, mm -hmm. two years later, multimillionaire, how does that play on your, your brain, your friends, your own arrogance? Like, do you have to sometimes 
back yourself back. Okay, you you feeling yourself too much, or wh- like what is that process? What is that like for you? You know, That's I think a lot of money I think, real fast. I think for my personal life, like relationship wise, it's hurt some things. Um, and the DMs go crazy. Got to. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> um, for the wrong reasons, yeah. you know what I mean. So like personal relationships with uh, women are is hard. It's harder. Why is it harder? I mean, I'm not even nowhere near like a celebrity or anything like that. But I think when money is the main focus of like, of when I, I don't know, people people act different around money. Like when they know you have money, it just it things you just can't. You don't know if it's authentic, mm. right? So but it, it could be authentic. It's just could. in your mind. It's could. like yeah, it could be. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Mm-hmm. Not just me. I think a lot, even even somebody you know making six seven you know six figures a year. I think mm-hmm. they think that same thing too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's here, there. And I think, like, I think I don't, I haven't, I wake up every day and be like, man, is it real? So I haven't hit that. I, I don't think I ever will because it's not my personality. I don't have arrogance. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, things have changed where I used to worry about, like, $21 this. I don't have to worry about that part. Mm-hmm. Or when I used to worry about, okay, let me book the best flight on the best day. I, like, I fly first class now. Mm-hmm. Small things have changed, but really in the grand, grand scheme of stuff and like like flying first class to me is more of who I meet in first class. Mm-hmm. It's changed. Mm-hmm. I've met like crazy business people in first class that like mentor me on like things. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I've met some of the, like I met a real good CPA on, on the flight one time sitting first mm-hmm. class. So just being in that, spending that extra 300 bucks on the ticket put me in a circle, which I know proximity now, I understand proximity that proximity to those 10 seats sitting in the first class is mm-hmm. just different. Wow. Um, it, it was something you were saying earlier. I don't know who you were talking to, but you was looking on your phone and you was like, man, they, they want to put me in first class, but if my people ain't in first class, ah, I don't really like to do it. Yeah. I think that, I, I would imagine you were like that before you got the money. Yeah, I mean, I never sat in first class before I got the money, mm-hmm. but like in, like, if, if I'm out and my, like, if anybody knows me, if we go out to eat, I'm paying, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's just just how I am, you know? I just, that's the things I like to do. But, you know, you, you want to see your peoples come up with you, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it makes sense. But, you know, I was booking a flight to St. Louis, which we leave in the morning, me and my camera guy. I'm not going to put Dave in the economy if I'm sitting in first class. So it's either we both sit in the economy or we both sit in first class. Mm-hmm. It don't, it don't make no, I ain't bougie. Mm-hmm. So we both sitting in first class though, but <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying though. Right, you know right. what I mean? It's like spend that, spend that little extra money for, because you know, when people are loyal to you, it, like people that work with you and mm-hmm. for you and with you, man, you got to respect that. And mm-hmm. I think that's really one of the big things that's kept me humble, right? Is even though I don't have any kids, I have a family inside of the workplace. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get wealthy, like playing an individual sport, like even though you're like a basketball player and make gets a two hundred million dollar contract, he really I mean he might have employees, but I have direct relationship. Like I'm not talking about my cook or nothing. Mm. I'm talking about like I have a direct thing with my employees. So I think that's kept me humble. Like gotcha. you know, I, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think I'll ever get arrogant. Yeah. Things will change, the things I buy will change, the places I sleep and live will change, but I'm just me. That's I was already rich a long time ago. I just never had the money. How do you get people to realize that? That they're ri- rich, like, what do you mean by rich? I was already mentally, like, like how I dress now and how I acted then and how I act now is the same when I was living in my mom's house. Like, I'm st- my, I, my clothes are still ironed, my shoes mm. are still clean. Like, you can't tell the difference. Mm. Like, and not only that, mentally, I was already, I was already rich. Like, I just didn't have the money. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, right? Poor is a mind state, rich is a mind state, mm-hmm. right? Wow. Right? If you're poor, that's a, that's a mind frame. If you're rich, that's a mind frame. Like, I've been broke. I've never been poor, mm. right? So, like, there's a, there's a big difference. Question for you. Who made who great? Did Michael Jordan make Phil Jackson look like the greatest coach ever, or did Phil Jackson make Michael Jordan the greatest player ever? Well, who made who great? Well, I think if you look, um, man, I'm not really a big basketball person, but if I had to answer that question, I'm going to say Michael Jordan made Phil Jackson look great. Because 
I don't know if he was able to do that without that type of talent again. You know what the thing is, though? I feel like it's, it's more so the coach than the player because Mike didn't have no rings before Phil. Kobe didn't have no rings before Phil. And I think if you had the right coach or mentor, that's what pulls out that star player. So how do you explain New York? What do you mean? New York, being a G, he being a GM over in New York. Oh, it's just not his thing. He, I don't know if he can run an organization, <laughs> but in terms of pouring into a player yeah. that's going to pour into the rest of his team. You feel me? Yeah. So Steve Kerr, right? Mm -hmm. He's the... Um, He's the coach over at Golden coach State. Coach at Golden State, right? And I think he might have adopted a philosophy to take a group of talented people, but they weren't like superstars before he came. But to make them all, I just feel like it's, it's more the coach than the player. But in your situation, you didn't necessarily have a coach, right? It was just... You two. You were Mike. You were Jordan. So nobody yeah. made you. No, nobody didn't make me. I think, I mean, my mom and dad did. But other than that, you know, I think just grit and hustle made me. Mm. Circumstances. What's your study schedule like? Oh, Sundays. So every Sunday is where I, I pour into myself. So I no longer watch uh, sports. So I don't consume any type of sports. I don't. I couldn't tell you who won MVP of the Super Bowl. I didn't know who was it going to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. until you know it's a big spectrum. Right. You end up finding out. But um, I educate myself mm -hmm. on a website. I, I I get I get a lot of courses, mm -hmm. and I watch them, and just to better myself. And it, even if it's just like learning how to run Facebook ads, even though I hire an agency, mm -hmm. it don't matter. I still know I still know enough to where they can't play me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So just anything. Like I like I, right now I'm studying how to how to write copy. And I'm a terrible writer. Obviously you see I'm a terrible <laughs> reader. But I need to understand how the emails work and all that stuff. So just always Sundays is how I pour into myself. Mm -hmm. And I listen to audio books as much as I can. Gotcha. Two more questions. One, if there's there's somebody out there right now mm -hmm. um and they have a thousand dollars and they want to get into business and they wanna do something, they're not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend? I would say put that thousand dollars in a pocket. And uh, there's so much things you can do out here without having money. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like money to buy the product or money to buy the, the, the thing. There's so many things you can do, but I think more importantly before you go spend a dime is really pour into yourself. Like, like money comes and goes. Mm -hmm. I can be broke tomorrow. It could all come crumbling down tomorrow. But what I have between my ears, I'm going to get it back, mm. right? Never fear of losing it because I know I can get it back. You can't take away from me what's right here. And I'm not even talking about book smarts because I told you I barely passed high school. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to college. But what I'm saying is being able to educate yourself on things and pouring into yourself. There's a, right now we're in the information age, mm -hmm. right? We were just speaking at a school today. And the students there don't remember life before internet. Being 34, I'm on that teeter line. I, on, I remember when AOL and Netscape just got here. DOS. So, you know, <laughs> oh, I, I remember <laughs> DOS last year. Yeah, yeah. I, know how to, I know how to write DOS. So to be able to actually um, see the both ends of it, we're in an information age now. I think there's too much information in this world for anybody to cry broke and the access to it it's so, the barrier to get the access to it is so low. Mm. It's like a straw on the ground. You just got to step over that. Mm. So anything you want to learn how to do, you can do that without actually spending money at first. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to spend money to educate yourself, but get to the point where you know this is something that you want to do. Gotcha. So if you want to be a wood, like a, what do you call it, a person, a carpenter, mm -hmm. you can find out a lot of carpenter stuff online. If you want to be a welder, if you want to own your own salon, I mean, I can just keep going and going. If mm -hmm. you want to start a t-shirt company, there's millions on videos mm -hmm. on how to start a t-shirt company. But then once you say, okay, this is it, then go find the person that you want to actually teach you. Buy their course or make them be your personal mentor, whatever it is. Go watch their car for free just so you can hang around them. Mm -hmm. And do that. So put that thousand dollars up. Buy a lot of ramen noodles and just just be ready for the storm. I love it. Last question I do is at the end, in all my wrap ups, give me a prediction. I like to make predictions of Max Maxwell five <laughs> to ten years from now. 
what what can we say on camera right now so that five, ten years from now we look at it like, yo, Max said he was going to do that on the podcast five years ago, and look at him, he did it. So what 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 can you say? Yeah, so I would say five, ten years from now, um, one thing, this is going to come left field. I will own a, a large agency, a marketing agency. Um, mm. I will also be, I would also, I'm also going to own a very, very large real estate empire, uh, especially in 10 years. When you say large agency, how yeah. large? Uh, 500, large 500 plus employees. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 500. Po- what does it take to run an organization? I don't know. Na- I don't employees? know yet. But if you follow me on YouTube, you're gonna find out. Or watch this. If you're watching this and it's already <laughs> five years from today, you can ask him how they do it, and he's got more answers for it's, sure. It'll be on YouTube because <laughs> I'm gonna document the whole thing. Yeah. Why an agency? Um. I don't know yet. I, I just know that I, I did the type of work before, I understand it, and uh, it's a good way to have your pulse, your hand, your, your, the pulse on the markets and, and mm. brands and everything. Mm. So there's a, there'll be an alternative motive to it somehow. Yeah. Do you see anything coming up next, like the next trend? Do you see the next wave? Do you see what's going to be happening later? Um, I believe that a lot of more personal brands are going to happen. I think you're going to see a lot more places like these pop up mm-hmm. that individuals own. I think it's going to be weird when you see uh, a kid comes out of high school and he's making, even, I mean, it's happening now, but more kids are financially independent, making more money than their parents mm. at, a, at right out of high school by becoming their own brand and, and controlling. Because right now there's no middleman to your consumer. Mm. It's direct to consumer. Yeah. So I think there's going to be that shift in that. And I think uh, I think a lot of, I think 10 years from now, a lot of brands that we know that are here now won't be here. Big ones. What do you think the fall off is going to be? Um, people are, people, the, 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 the grasp of the information age and the young, like the, 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 the 13 and 11, 12 year olds now are going to change the game. Mm, meaning, y'all better mentor some 13. I'm about to go on and get me a little 13, 14 year old, <laughs> put them under my wing. They think different. They see it different. They see it different. So uh, please let everybody know where to find you. And yes, Max Maxwell will be speaking at the Real Social Proof Conference. Make sure y'all are in the building. Shake his hand, meet him. So um, yeah, please just tell everybody how to meet, how to find you, how to follow you. Uh, if you search Max Maxwell on YouTube, Instagram, uh, any other platform. You're hard to find. I'm not hard to find. Max Maxwell. There it is. See, that's what I'm talking about. He ain't plugged no course. He ain't plugged no website. He's <laughs> like, yo, find me, Max Maxwell. So, yo, thank you so much. Appreciate Max. you having me. I appreciate man. it. I can thank see you. myself watching this over and over again because, like, you really got like my mind turning on a whole nother. Yeah. Life, so, make sure y'all follow Max Maxwell, man. See y'all on social proof. Peace. Peace.